Um, I don't normally do these types of uh, video, um, but what I thought I'd do today is I would talk about the um, small loop or mag loop antenna. I get asked this on a daily basis. I've got a noise problem. Will this help me cure, uh, cure my noise problem? I've got a small small plot. Will it help me? You know, can I put it up in a small plot? Um, and what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? And all that sort of stuff, really, with uh, with loop antennas. Well, let's um, let's talk about what a loop antenna um, is and what it does, and the advantages and disadvantages of said. Number one, um, before we carry on, is that messing around with any type of antenna can be quite hazardous. There are some really high voltages involved, and none more so than, uh, say, a loop antenna where there's a big capacitor. Um, you can potentially have several thousand volts um, you know, at that, that uh, capacitor during transmit. Now, first of, uh, of all, what we'll do is we'll just draw out a typical loop. Now, I'm going to model this on a zero because it's actually it's a very easy loop to kind of model out on. Now I don't have any modeling software here, so don't 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 shoot me with that one. Um, right, this is a typical loop antenna, okay, and the zero is made up something like this. Um, and it will have that, and that is adjustable. That is the, the basic uh, loop antenna. Um, first things to note, um, what we'll do is we'll put we'll put a bit of green in there. Okay, so first point to note is the transmit pattern. Okay, we have a ground wave. Okay, that was a ground wave. We have a sky wave, um, and we have envis or near vertical. Um, going that way okay but we also it's pretty even Stevens all the way through and you, you also get some um, some radiation down towards the ground which is quite quickly reflected up again out the way um, or absorbed I don't know um, again if you know better than me um, please if you put the uh, any information you can or anything you know in the description below that'd be really useful um, and there's the ground there. Um, one important thing to note is the height there should be somewhere between one and two loop heights. So if this is a meter, that should be either one or two meters above the ground. Um, it doesn't need to be any more. Um, and I get off and I'm asked, can I put this on a garage roof or that sort of thing? Um, my gut reaction is no. Um, they just don't work very well up there. It's anything like this, it's a lottery, um, just how it will work in its location. And you've got to try it first. Try it, see what it's like. But the, the really bad thing about, or the, the one of the worst um, sort of uh, uh, factors with a, with a loop antenna is that if they decide they don't want to work today, they won't. Okay, so... We've done that. We've had a little look at the radiation pattern. So let's get rid of those. Okay. Now, just um, while we're here, we'll we'll, we'll talk about what. Um, let's talk about a vertical antenna and how it can. Because this is another thing that I'm asked. How does this compare to a dipole? How does this compare to a um, vertical antenna? Well, I'm going to try my best to try and show you how I see this. Right, and we'll use a bit of blue around there. Right. Okay. Um, we've, we've already discovered that this loop will transmit at near vertical. Um, it has a sky wave and it has a ground wave. Now, it's very hard to compare a loop to a um, dipole because um, in the UK, we, it's very difficult for us typically to install a dipole correctly. Um, you probably see more dipoles at sort of probably 10, 15 feet off the ground and being used on all of HF. Um, 
that, that is not ideal. Um, you should really be installing something like a dipole at half a wavelength. So basically you're not comparing eggs for eggs. <clears throat> It's easier to compare a loop to a, to a vertical antenna <clears throat> because um, it, they, they tend to be ground mounted. A vertical antenna is very difficult to, um, to mount off the ground because obviously you need some kind of radial system and typically they're all ground mounted which is nice but it does have um, a bit of a downside. Now a vertical antenna typically, okay, not always, not every antenna like this, this is just a generalization, um, so don't start moaning, has a takeoff angle at those sort of angles ish, maybe a bit further down. But there's normally a real big null in the near vertical. Okay, so when we look at the when we said earlier on, the loop antenna has a near vertical um, uh, takeoff uh, angle, but it's also got a ground wave and it's also got the sky wave that we're looking for. So there's your DX, um, that's your local, um, and I would say that probably would be local as well, ground wave. Um, so there's your, your kind of um, your, your angle of the dangles. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat, I'm not an expert, if you know any better, don't moan, just put in the, in the thing down below, um, you know, by all means, correct me, but just put it in the, in the comments, be nice, uh, and, uh, and let's discuss, because it's good fun, this is what it's all about. Right, so we now know that, that a loop compares very well to a vertical, however, what is different is the efficiency. The loop can be very, very inefficient, whereas the vertical can be very efficient. So if you're going to go compare then eggs for eggs, what's it like on a, on for DX? It's not going to be as good as a, a good vertical installed correctly. However, a good vertical installed incorrectly, the loop will smash it every single time. That brings us on to um, the dipole antenna. How does it compare to a dipole? Well, a dipole antenna, if it's not been installed correctly, will give you very good NVIS or uh, near vertical stuff, but very poor um, sort of uh, like Skywave or DX sort of uh, stuff. Unless you start lifting this up to bring everything down, because obviously the, the better you get this, if you get this up further, then obviously these these sides they start to, to lay down just as you bring the antenna in uh, upward. So you can sort of see that you know um, that um, that a dipole antenna that is installed in a typical UK garden at ten or fifteen feet is going to have a very high angle in, you know um, incident or angle going up rather than than actually going out sort of DX wise. So it compares very favorably again with that. But again, like I said, does this compare to a correctly installed dipole? The answer is no, it's gonna be well off the, off the uh, mark. Um, however, what I would say again is that this has got a near, near um, uh, you know, horizontal, it's got your sky wave and it's got your NVIS. So it's got the best of both worlds. Um, but again, the efficiency is down, okay? It can be 30, 40, 50% efficient on, on the bigger bands, especially when you're starting to get towards the edge. Um, the other thing is um, to bear in mind what the differences are in these, okay? Now, your typical dipole, okay, is a very strong E-field antenna. Okay, and you get high voltage at the very at the very ends, okay, and uh, possibly elsewhere on there. I, I really don't know. Whereas um, your typical mag loop will have a very high voltage in this area, okay. So that would be the E field, but on a 
on sort of like these type of antennas, you, you tend to get a lot of voltage at certain points along the way. So if you might have traps, you might have a, an E-field across it. Um, again, I'd like to know actually well, how to, I'll tell you what, if someone knows how to calculate the, the voltage at the ends of these sort of dipole antennas or a vertical antenna, that would be very interesting because, um, or where the voltage or what the current um, path is on these things because next thing I'm going to get into is the voltage and current distribution on the loop itself. Now this is quite interesting actually because here we have very high voltage. Um, so we have um, high voltage across um, here and here. Um, and that can be very high. It can be sort of 7 to 8K kV. Um, and that's at 100 watts, okay, ish. But what we're interested in is the peak. That's 100, that's 7 to 8 kilovolts peak. Okay, that's very important, that bit, because the, the peak voltage will cause the flash over. Um, you often find that these things will run typically at say, I don't know, 100 watts, maybe four or 5,000 volts, but it's the peak voltage that will cause that flash over. Once that happens and you get that little plasma trail, then obviously it's off um, and uh, you know that can damage the, the antenna, damage your radio, who knows? So you wanna try and be very careful of that or be very aware of that. Um, by the way, if there's any fan noise, by the way, this is my, I'm doing this on my laptop and it's a really noisy fan at the moment. Um, right, so, um, so what else can we do? So we've done that bit, we've done that bit. Right, now current um, around the sort of sides. Obviously here you've got a lot of voltage, but 180 degrees to that, you've got a lot of amps down the bottom here. Okay, and these get progressively less as you get up here. So down at this point, you could have tens of amps. So you could have 10 to say 80 amps. I don't know, even more possibly, who knows. Um, at this point, it's quite incredible. And that then pushes the envelope just a little bit because we've really got to then look at what the, the big killer is for, for what makes a mag loop or a small loop antenna um, inefficient what makes it bad okay what makes a, a a bad mag loop well the answer to that one is joints okay if you start putting joints in it if they're not joined correctly then obviously you start bringing in resistance and the minute that you start bringing in to, in in resistance into the the loop then that starts to fall over very very quickly because that really does kill the efficiency they've got to be absolutely bang on and if you look at something like an mfj loop or a zero loop or um you know various other loops these are non-existent okay or they weld them that's why you don't see loops often made in more than say one whole piece um, and if you look at something like um let's get rid of those um, if you look at something like um like a, a baby loop from zero Let's get rid of them. Um, at this point, there's normally a hinge. Um, if I put it down the bottom here. Okay. Um, and you've got the two parts to the loop coming out. They've got a massive big bit of stainless, which has got God knows how many bolts across the bottom. Okay. Making up the actual link down the bottom. And that's so that they, they try, they reduce in the loss as, as best as possible. Because obviously over that hinge you can you could get potentially a lot of loss. Right, so there's our loop. We now know that how it compares to a mag to a to a vertical. We know how it compares to a dipole. But the other thing to bear in mind as well is that the other advantage with a with a mag loop is that it's not affected quite so much by um, by noise, and it doesn't it often doesn't um, interfere with um, other things quite as much as some aerials. If you've got a long wire, say for instance, that can, that can interfere with an awful lot of things. Um, because it's high voltages, it's an E-field antenna, whereas these are not. Um, so let me, uh, let's just zap him out of the way. And so, yeah, uh, let me just get rid of that, sorry. There we go. Right. 
that'll do. Okay, so the other thing to look at is the way that this thing actually works. So if I put a loop in here, like so, and then we'll put in the um, we'll put in the radiation pattern, sort of. Okay, it's it sort of radiates out, kind of like that. I mean, that's a kind of exaggerated way of doing it. All right, it's a bit of artistic and thing in there. Okay, but the thing that we're interested in, okay, is where that there is RF. Okay, but here is is your magnetic field. It goes something like that. Okay, and that is typically how it works. And the other thing to remember is that at this point, um, now I did read somewhere um, that this null. It's about 10 dB, um, and it's kind of there. So if you've got noise, say over here, radiating out noise, and you're picking it up, if you were to rotate this round so that obviously it went out that way, and that null then sits over that noise, and we'll put that in red for you there. So if that null goes in there, so there's your null, looking at the noise, then you can't hear it. It's gone. Um, so, you know, that's that's very, very you know useful with one of these things. Anyway, look, I think that'll do, um, because um, I'm, I'm struggling now to, to remember what I've actually said. So what I'll do is, if you want to know anything about these things, um, do fling us over a um, um, questions. Um, what I might do is I know someone that likes his modeling software. I might actually speak to him and see if he'll do me a favor and model one up one day. Um, and um, because I'm quite intrigued to sort of see this, how this actually functions, because this is actually really interesting, um, a lot of these loops. And I do get asked about this quite a lot. Um, the other thing is if you know any really simple calculations or if you, you know how to explain it simply, then please put in the comments. Um, one is how we calculate, say, things like um, the voltages at the end of a dipole, at the end of a long wire, um, and at the tip of or uh, midpoints or of, uh, of a vertical, or if you know how to um, calculate you know, sort of like the, the, the current uh, distribution across, you know, the aforementioned dipoles, you know, verticals, that sort of thing. Or if you've actually got some some good experience with um, with with loops, because that would be really interesting to, to learn more about these. So do leave comments um, and, uh, you know, so keep them, keep them nice. Um, I'm not an authority um, on this sort of stuff. This is kind of what I've picked up along the way. I don't think it's wrong. Um, it could be, um, but I think um, I think this is pretty much the school of thought on on uh, small loop antennas. Like I said earlier on, these do generate quite a lot of voltage. Please be careful, as does any type of antenna. Please be careful with all antennas. Um, and um, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.